Uh, hello and welcome. And before we get started, please remember to turn off all pagers, cell phones, Blackberry, smartphones, Android devices, and legacy Apple products. <laughs> Bike Snob is a blogger slash cyclist, a racer slash commuter, a satirist slash cultural observer, and an online researcher finding the silliest posters on Craigslist and slashing their proverbial tires. His new book helps us realize just how ludicrous we can all be about cycling and just how ludicrously cool cycling can be. From the history of old-timey cycling in his hometown of New York to poking fun of all the various characters that perch themselves atop bicycles to straight out tips on how to ride and how to thrive, the book is a homage to the sport Bike Snob obviously loves. Since we're here at Google, I thought I'd take a quick look at US web search trends for the term Bike Snob in 2010. While still not as popular as terms like Lance Armstrong, Fixed Gear, or even Lone Wolf, <laughs> Bike Snob does produce more queries uh, than Tour of California winner Michael Rogers, runner-up Leapheimer, or even Nash Bar Coupons. <laughs> this spring, web search traffic doubled when Bike Snob revealed his true identity, Evan Weiss. Handily surpassing queries for local cyclist slash entrepreneur and champion of cycling clothing is business casual, Sergey Brin. <laughs> Mr. Weiss is here today to talk about his new book, Bike Snob. Following the talk, there'll be a Q&A session. Please remember to use a microphone when you're asking questions for the benefit of the remote video audiences. And this is being recorded on YouTube. Our local book retailer, Books Inc., I believe has uh, still got some books to sell back there. And Mr. B um, Weiss will be sticking around to sign them. So please join me in welcoming Evan Weiss, AKA Bike Snob. Hi, thank you very much for uh for coming. It's great to be here at, at Yahoo. Um, <laughs> is this Yahoo or is that later? Google. Even better. It's great to be here at Google. Thank you very much. Um, Google, in a lot of ways, in, in many, many ways, made what I'm doing possible now, which is, uh, you know, writing this blog every day, which is a great pleasure in my life. Uh, people seem to enjoy it. It's made it possible for me to, to write a book and have it published. It sent me on a tour uh, all over the country, or at least the cool, trendy parts of the country. They don't send me to the regular parts. They're sending me on like the burrito belt, kind of, <laughs> the hipster belt. But I mean, it's, it's absolutely great. And I, I, I seriously thank you for that. Having said that, um, I've, I've dreamed of this moment uh, for some time because um, while I, I, use an, I publish my blog uh, using Blogger, um, and, uh, well, about a, a April of, uh, 2009, you actually featured me as a blog of note, which was flattering, which was, uh, uh, nice for me, uh, right between inside the loop and moments of perfect clarity. I don't know what those blogs are. I don't know if any of them have been here, but here I am. Um, and that was a nice moment, but then a month later, I, was, I, should, I should add that I was, I was monetizing with your AdSense. Uh, but a month later, I got this on my Gmail, another fine Google product, that, uh, what does it say? That, that you needed to terminate my AdSense because I'm, I'm to protect the interests of both our advertisers and our other AdSense publishers. So I, I guess, I, I don't know why this was, and then I appealed it, and, th and this appeal was denied. So I, I'm kind of, I, I don't mean this to be, I'm, I, nobody's laughing, it's kind of funny. But I was kind of reeling at the time, and I was wanting to talk to people. I actually, I used to work around the corner from uh, 111 8th Avenue in New York, which is uh, where your, your, your New York brethren and sistren, sistren work. <laughs> they, they wouldn't let me in, I tried to kind of barnstorm. <laughs> I tried to do the Michael Moore thing, they, they weren't having it. You got good security, guys. <laughs> you should feel safe at work. But uh, they wouldn't let me in. So I've been wondering all this time, what happened? I can't figure it out, I don't have AdSense. Sometimes you invite me to do other programs. I'm like, well that sounds lovely, I would like to do this program. But you need an AdSense program to do it, or, or membership, or whatever you call it. And I can't, I've been sort of locked out. Yet here I am talking to you, and it's an interesting kind of thing there. And the only thing I can think of, I'm sure there's a simple explanation, the only thing I can think of that I did wrong was like two days before 
you terminated it. I did post this picture. <laughs> but, like, first of all, it was very much in context, and it was making a really sophisticated point about our culture and about media and all that stuff. And second of all, as you can see, it's censored. It's, I, when, I, when I put anything racy on the blog, I make sure to sepia tone it because, you know, anything like, like from the Victorian era, like even if they're naked, that's not offensive because a after a certain point, the statute of limitations on nudity ends, you know, it's fine. So I do that. And then just for good measure, Larry King, I always put Larry King over anything. So there was that. I don't know if this was the picture that kind of made me a Google pariah and caused you to lock me out, but I don't know, it's food for thought for you guys. I would love to kind of smooth this over, maybe perhaps monetize you, monetize with you again in the future. Uh, you know, I think we can make this work. I think we could salvage this. I think working together we can do this. So I'm just putting that out there. So, okay, but uh, you know, and I feel like I, I started off on the wrong foot with you guys now, and it's awkward, but you know, let's let bygones be bygones. Just give me my account back. The money that was in it, there was money in it. Money. There's like, there was like hundreds of dollars in there. Maybe one and a half hundred. So, okay, anyway. So having done that, uh, having gotten that, cleared the air, uh, this is the slideshow proper. And what I've done with this slideshow is, if you're familiar with my blog and you're not just here because you're, you're cutting out of work, um, my blog, I make fun of a lot of people on the blog. You know, I poke fun at everybody. And I do that not to offend anybody. I'm, I'm making fun of myself as much as anybody else, but I do it so we all can laugh. But I wrote the blog anonymously for a long time. And that's sort of unfair, you know? It doesn't let people get you back. So what I wanted to do with the slideshow was give people an opportunity to, you know, lay myself bare, let you laugh at me uh, as I've laughed at all of you. Uh, so that's the slideshow, and I should add that my tour and all of this is brought to you by a company called NOG. NOG is a manufacturer of cycling accessories and lights. Among those lights are uh, what are called the, the hipster cysts. I don't know if anybody, I call them hipster cysts. They're called NOG frogs. They're little lights you put on your bike. That's my, I, I put many NOGs on a bike there so you can see what they are. So I want to thank NOG for making this possible. This is Michael Elliott from Nog eating a, uh, a chicken leg. That's the, that's the inventor of the Nog, uh, hipster cyst. So there you go. Uh, okay, so this is me early on. This is my first real bicycle, non-big wheel, non-tricycle, non-whatever, with the, uh, the training wheels. Uh, this is uh, from the 1970s, and that's how people dressed in the 1970s. Uh, and I had the streamers and the whole thing. Then I got a little older and I got my first BMX bike, which was a Schwinn Scrambler, which came with Skyway Tough Wheel 2 mag wheels, which were really cool wheels at the time. And that kind of got me into loving uh, BMX. This is still the 70s. Uh, this is Bayswater Far Rockaway in uh, New York, if anybody knows it. Um, that's, uh, that's where I lived at the time. And uh, again, I should say that these clothes are very trendy now. This was how people dressed in the 70s, just normally. This is the clothing that was available to us at the time. Like the ringer tee, I think it was a Nashville t-shirt I was wearing. You would just wear things like that. It wasn't a statement, it wasn't a whole thing. Now that shirt in that size an adult would wear and pay like $200 for it. It's not, it wasn't like that, it was a simpler time. All right, next stage in my evolution as a, as a cyclist. Then I stepped up to the, uh, the Harrow uh, uh, bike, the Harrow BMX. I don't know if anybody uh, like, was into BMX ba back in the day, as they say, but Harrow's were pretty nice bikes. And uh, that's my brother holding it down in the background in the soccer jersey. Between the, you didn't step to us, look at us, you know? And uh, uh, again, the socks, it was normal to wear socks at knee-high height like that. It was just a regular thing to do. It's how people wore socks. Uh, they, didn't, they hadn't invented short socks yet. Le Tigre, uh, a Le Tigre shirt, tennis shirt. Again, very, very kind of ironically trendy. I think there's a band called Le Tigre, no? Yes? In Williamsburg or something? But back then it was only a shirt and it was, it was just what you wore. And uh, valve, uh, dice valve caps, that was my first customization. 
I had the, uh, the ODY mushroom grips and the, uh, the donuts, which protected sort of the inside of your hand. Very important accessory. Uh, uh, still hadn't taken off the reflectors, though. It's a little embarrassing. <laughs> okay, so then you get a little older, you know, your body chemistry changes, and I entered into kind of a sullen phase in my life. And during this sullen phase, this is how I looked, and I would kind of skulk around in doorways, as you do, just kind of... That's all you did. You just kind of dressed a certain way, you wanted a certain face, and you'd find a cool doorway, and you'd lean in it, and you'd be... You'd be kind of sullen, and, and that's a good look for doing that. This look, however, is not a good look at the beach, where it goes horribly, horribly <laughs> awry, where the salt air just enters the hair, and it just goes bam, and it's so, you know, not a good look for the beach. Um, then, then I started racing and all of that stuff. So this is what I looked like when I was a lowly cat five, just starting to race. Hadn't discovered the bib shorts yet. I was still wearing the half shorts. Uh, I was, I was way, into, way too into having a Cannondale. I've got a Cannondale jersey and water bottle and bike. Uh, but that's the beginning. That's when I started racing. It's before I kind of, you know, before you get on a team and you have a kit and the whole thing and you think you're cool. The pasty white legs have just been shaved. Um, and then there, that's my brother's uh, 200SX in the background there. That's for sale if anybody's interested. I got that out in the parking lot. Uh, I'll take 200 for it. Yeah, that, that, that car is on the scrap heap now, I'm sure. That was a while ago. Uh, right. That's my newborn son. How did that get in there? I don't know. He's three weeks old. Thank you. It's Elliot. That's just a gratuitous baby insertion shot. Thank you for that. Okay. Now I'd like to take a little detour. Um, Cycling in New York City. I write a lot about cycling in New York City. Um, I don't know how many of you have cycled in New York City. I don't know where most of you guys live. I mean, I, I, I love coming out here and riding. Even in the city, even in San Francisco, I think it's a very pleasant place to ride. It's pretty chill. Um, uh, New York is getting better and better, but it's pretty bad. So this, um, I wrote an article in Outside Magazine a while ago about Portland. And in it, I mentioned, this was last fall, I mentioned just before leaving for Portland, I got hit by a car uh, from behind. I was just riding along JRA, as they say in the bike shops, and somebody just kind of hit me from behind. And this is the woman who hit me from behind, and that's her maroon Buick. And this is the picture I took as I, just after I, I collected myself off the pavement, bloodied and limping, and I was like limping towards her like a, like a zombie, you know, all scraped up. <laughs> And as she stood there, just kind of with her hands behind her back, as you see her, just kind of curiously looking at this bloody, lycra-clad guy kind of just limping towards her. Um, and uh, that's her. And her name and address are as follows. <laughs> so if you have anything you'd like to say, if you want to send her pizzas, you get bored on Friday night. If you have any decaying organic matter, you're not going to compost, although I'm sure all of you compost everything. But, you know, any, anything smelly or hor horrific you want to send her, please do. I couldn't find her number. But I did, I did use your, your popular search engine um, to, uh, to try to learn more about her. And it turns out that she shares a name with a, a playmate of some note. So I didn't get hit by that Crystal Harris, though. I got hit by this Crystal Harris. <laughs> So after she hit me and after I dragged myself over to her and she kind of, oh, and I said, I, what happened? What did you do there? She's, she just said, she said, oh, I thought I could get around you. And that was it. She thought she could get around me, but she couldn't. And so there I was kind of propped up against the wall of a car wash waiting for the police to come. And she was just highlighting something. She was just sitting there highlighting. I don't know what it was. Um, so that's it. So that was my view for like a half hour before the cops came. And lawyers would stop and try to like solicit my business. Some guy in a really slick suit stopped his Escalade and was like, uh, you know, you're going to need a lawyer for this. I was like, just keep, keep rolling, keep going. Uh, I could have been looking at that Crystal Harris for a half hour while bleeding, but I was looking at this Crystal Harris <laughs> for a half hour while bleeding. So that's just another day cycling in New York City. All right, so back to the blog. I used to write the blog anonymously. This is, this is an actual, this is how I worked. I worked in the dark. I was that scared. 
Then I revealed myself, lights on, there I was, laid bare. I worked in the bathroom, by the way. Um, and not everybody liked it when I, when I became unanonymous or, or whatever you would call it. Like, I, I, you know how the internet is. People like to kind of flame you and complain and say you're a sellout and a shark jumper and all that kind of stuff. So, like, typical chatter, and this is Twitter, so you have to read from the bottom. So I'd see this, like, man, this bike snob guy is one self-promoting crazy Jew. Every effing post bore effing blah. Then he, but he reworked it. Then he's like, man, this bike snob guy is one self-promoting mother effer. Every effing post bore effing blah. He went from Jew to mother effer for some reason. <laughs> then he recanted the whole thing there at the end. That came out really wrong. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, it hasn't all been uh, uh, insults and complaints. I've had some, I've, I've, I've had some, I'm very happy that people have enjoyed uh, the book and the blog and have been very supportive. Uh, even people in the world of cycling and, the, you know, even, even uh, former, uh, even Tour de France winners have, have come out and supported me. One in particular, a really famous Tour de France winner. I'm sure all of you know who he is. Good to have him in my corner. You want a guy like Floyd in your corner? That's him. That's Photoshop, by the way. That's not real. That was a reader who sent me that. And by the way, Floyd, I don't know how many of you saw, caught him at his Google appearance, but he was here. Did anyone see Floyd when he was here? Yeah, Floyd was here. So, you know, that's kind of... I watched that the other day. I was like, that's kind of funny. He, he really kind of laid it on there. Yeah, please. I would love one. Uh, so there, there you go. And that's it. That's my presentation. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> golf claps all around. Okay, thanks. Now, um, uh, uh, if anybody has any, any questions, I would be happy to answer them. And if anybody just wants to kind of insult me, I'd be happy to stand here and take it. Or anything in between. Questions? Concerns? Yes? So you're going to have to repeat the question for me. So did you find it stressful at all to do stuff anonymously? Like, were you afraid of getting find, found out? Like, how did that impact you? Uh, was I afraid of, like, repercussions when I, was, when I became unanonymous? Before, or? before you, when you were anonymous, were you, how paranoid were you about being anonymous? Oh, I, I wasn't really, how paranoid was I about staying anonymous when I was anonymous? Uh, I don't know. I, I was pretty, I was pretty uh, tight about it. Like, I didn't, I never really told people. I only told people close to me. Um, I, just, I just wanted to stay anonymous. And, uh, but after a while, it felt kind of like, uh, it just felt gimmicky. And people were finding out anyway. And then, then you just kind of, you know, it would be embarrassing to be like still anonymous now and thinking people think you're anonymous and they see you. It's like being naked and thinking nobody sees you. So, so I dispensed with it. Uh, any, anything else? Yes, in the spinny beanie hat. <laughs> oh, can you, I'm sorry, can you, can you speak into the microphone so that this could be recorded for eternity in the annals of YouTube, another fine Google product? Do you own... <laughs> do you own any bikes that um, can do bar spins? Uh, do I own any bar spinnable bikes? No, I don't think any of my bikes are bar spinnable. Uh, bar spin, if you're unfamiliar, that's where you kind of ride, you do like a wheelie and you spin, you spin your handlebars around. For some reason, the youth of America is just absolutely thrilled by this. Uh, no, because they all have cables, they all have brake cables on them, so they can't spin around. No, no, I'm thinking of getting one though. Uh, anything else? Questions? I take that, I'm taking this as a sign that my presentation was very thorough. <laughs> no questions. Floyd stories from when he was here? No Am I doping? Am I doping? <laughs> <laughs> don't, I, don't, I, I, don't I seem like I'm doping? <laughs> I'm on Adderall and cough medicine right now. I don't know what's happening. Uh, yes? Can you tell us what your favorite kind of bike is? Favorite kind of bike? Uh, it depends what I'm doing. I just like, um, it depends what I'm doing. My favorite kind of riding is, uh, 
it, well, one of the things I should say, what, the reason I wrote the book, uh, and the book is, is a little different from the blog in that I try to keep it as funny as the, as the blog, uh, but I also try to make it a little more uh, in, uh, endearing, maybe is the right word, the kind of thing that sort of explains why I love cycling, instead of just making fun of it, why I love this, why I think cycling's a great thing, and, and why it's brought me a lot of, a lot of joy and and happiness and all of that stuff. And, and that's because the thing that's great about riding a bike is you can, you can have a lot of fun doing it. You can do it purely recreationally. You know, you can race or you could do your long rides on the weekend, but you can use it totally practically. And you can, uh, but you can enjoy that practical use. You know, you can enjoy your commute. You can sort of weave it into your day. There's not a lot of things that you can do that with, you know. Um, so that's what I like about it. So my favorite kind of bike, it really depends. Like, I love, I have just a, a beat up city bike that I used to get around town and I love that bike, you know, I, I just love a bike that's completely useful and, and, and absolutely not precious and that you can, and that, that just does its job. And, um, uh, but you know, I love road bikes, mountain bikes, cyclocross bikes, uh, all of it, just not recumbents, those things scare me. <laughs> Yes, hi. I, I'm curious about your, your blog as a blog. You, you mentioned you'd written for Outside before. Was that before the blog? And when you started the blog, did you have a plan to start to keep it up at the level you have, or did it kind of grow? Uh, no, all the writing like for Outside, and I write a column for Bicycling Magazine, and I, I do some other, other writing like that, and this book, all of that came out of the blog. So, um, and when I started the blog, uh, I had absolutely no kind of grand design or plan or anything like that. I wasn't even much of a, a blog reader. I just kind of, um, I've always been a writer and I've always been kind of in the publishing scene or world or whatever you want to call it. But I just, I just started playing around with, with uh, Blogger and, and started posting and just decided to do it every day. And I was really thrilled and happy that people, uh, people kept on. So no, absolutely no plan for a thought, really, anything like that. Just really fortuitous question or are you yeah, trying to no. slip out on, on scene? No, 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 no. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, so how many bikes do you own and, and how many bikes is too many? Like general guidance? Uh, I own, I think I own six bikes. Like when you ride a lot and if you race, yeah, I race as well. I mean, you know, you say you race and people think you're a serious good rider and I'm not, but uh, um, when you race you wind up having a lot of bikes for different kind of races. So I think I have six, but it, it sort of fluctuates. You sell bikes, you get new ones. Something, I have six. I think too many bikes is just, if you have like a bike you don't ever ride, you know, if you have that bike that's just kind of sitting around there not getting used, you have too many bikes. But, you know, if you have 20 bikes and you ride them all the time, that's fine. When you can have one, you could have 50. Yes? Uh, can, you expo uh, can you kind of describe how much commitment it takes to keep bike snob working? Like, how many hours a day or how much... Like, um, how much commitment it takes... Uh, um... It definitely takes a lot of commitment in that. It especially took commitment because when I started the blog, I was, uh, I was working a, a full-time job at, at a literary agency. And, um, um, to, and I was dedicated. I published every, every day, you know, every weekday, and I was very committed to that. As soon as I, I realized I had an audience, I, mean, I was very, very, very grateful to the, for that. And I was determined to give my audience, my readers, whatever you want to call them, something every day. And, and no matter what the cost. So, so it took a lot of commitment because when you have a full-time job and you're write, writing a blog in the morning and sometimes writing it on the company time or really most of the time, you know, like you're posting like under heavy fire, like a boss is yelling at me and I'm like, I'm going to get this. If I get fired in the course of, of posting this, I'm fine with that. Because really, like once, I, once, once the blog started going, I was committed a hundred percent. So fire me, do whatever, I'm going to do it. Uh, they could only, my publisher could only send me to, to so many places and I'm, I'm uh, my publisher and Nog and you know the sponsor, like as I'm a first time author, uh, wrote a, 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 a book about cycling so it's not like, you know, I'm, I'm lucky and grateful that my publisher was able to, to send me to any cities and um, no seriously and uh, uh, LA, I would love to go to LA uh, to visit, and I plan to one of these days. And actually, you read more and more about LA and how it's how 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 much cycling stuff is going on there. And um, it's it's seriously something I want to go and experience. Uh, but unfortunately, they weren't on the tour. So I actually have two questions. 
firstly, the, f the best post you ever wrote was the one where you described the little things that you look for on people's bikes to see if they're serious or not. Yeah. Like whether they're the sticker on the tire lines up with the valve stem, that kind of stuff. Yeah. One notable omission was you, you didn't describe looking for the ferrules on the end of cables, which I was surprised that you missed. I always look for that. <laughs> so I wanted to see if there's any other things you've thought of since then. And then the second question is, what's your least favorite and most favorite maintenance task on a bike? My favorite and least favorite, I'll start with that one. My favorite and least favorite maintenance task. On the, definitely my least favorite maintenance task on a bike is anything like involving the drive train and cleaning thereof or, or chain removal and, and all of that, especially because I neglect that stuff to begin with. So if I have to touch my drive train, it's, it's like, uh, you know, it's like I was paddling around in the Gulf, like I'm covered in black. It's, it's not good. So I hate that. I really, really enjoy... I'm not very good at it, uh, but I, I really like building wheels. Like, I could build wheels all day long. Bad, misshapen, out of true wheels, but wheels. I, it's really, it's like, it's like knitting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in terms of other nitpicky stuff on bikes that I notice, like, I don't know, it's kind of, there's, there's yeah, so many things. Ferals, sometimes you don't use the ferals. I don't want to get into a whole ferals thing here, but sometimes you don't use the ferals. They, Thank you for being here. Thank um, you. I first, I think I was introduced to your blog um, with two posts, um, which are incredible. First was your bicycling editor's choice. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. Where you use such colorful language as uh, descends like a squirrel, a greased squirrel in a luge, and yeah. <laughs> accelerates like a particle in a particle accelerator, which itself is itself a particle in a giant particle yeah. accelerator. <laughs> Thank bicycling you. magazine should actually get you to write their. Um, bike reviews. Anyways, um, are there any posts that you enjoyed particularly writing? Like some, it seems like you're really inspired and completely on fire. Are there any that you remember just loving like the world's greatest Madone? Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, that I was, sh I yeah, that's my bike shop friends and oh man, they get huge kick out of it. Thank, thank you very much. First of all, it's hard. Cause it's hard to think of one. You know, I mean, obviously some are better than others and, and you know, they're just not all going to be good, but I, at, at least there's something every day. But um, that, that bicycling one is a favorite of mine because I really had fun riding that. And, um, and I, that was definitely a, a, a moment in, in writing the blog where I know that post got forwarded around a lot and I know it brought a, new, a lot of new readers to the, to the blog and I, so, so it was fun to write and it was great to see people enjoy it and people from bicycling saw it and liked it and I think it was after that that bicycling first, like in the very early days of my blog they did like a little profile of me and I think that's, that's how I, I got on their radar. Oh and another post that comes to mind was I wrote a post about Michael Ball, the, the guy who was the owner of Rock Racing, which was kind of like, it was like, they were like a wrestling team, but for cycling, they were like lots of, and, they, and the, he also owns a jeans company, those kind of jeans with lots of like wrinkles and stuff, really expensive jeans, really, really cheap. I wrote a post about Michael, like from Michael Ball's perspective, where he like drew a wheel on a napkin and how he was gonna make this wheel. It's, describing blog posts is not the most, amusing <laughs> thing. But that post I was very fond of as well. I'll have to hunt that one down. Yeah. Um, two, two things. First of all, as an LA native, uh, I'd like to warn you that most people who, who see people on bikes look at them funny and ask, where's the engine? Right. Um, may not be the best, most friendly city, probably not nearly as bad as um, New York. But, um, And I am completely forgetting the second thing no. I might ask. <laughs> <laughs> with, with regard to the... Oh, did you remember? Or I was gonna uh, I'll go to the back of the line and ask what I remember. Okay, but with regard to the thing about L.A., I, I mean, from where I'm sitting, which is not in L.A., but uh, I, I see more and more people, and it's younger people, obviously, but are really, like, taking pride in the fact that they're riding bikes and there's, like, a real emerging kind of commuting thing, or at least there appears to be. And I hear from people in L.A. all the time saying how... How, how more and more people are riding and it's exploding and I have to come there. So I don't know. I mean, but you, you know, you're from L.A. and I'm not. But I don't know. Maybe in the last few years it's gotten better or not. Uh, but what's her name? Anne Hathaway hit that guy on his fixed gear the, the, a few months ago. You remember that? That was unfortunate. <laughs> the other thing that I was going to ask was you may have seen um, 
blue conveyances around the Google campus. Yeah. Would you care to critique them? Oh, no. I mean, you know, <laughs> there's, I know you have your whimsical colored bikes that you kind of hop around and jump on and off. I, it's great. It looks, it's, it makes sense. Yeah. I, I, everything's very cutesy colored around here. So it's like M&M land. It's very nice. It's charming. I, you know, it's wonderful. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's cool that you got the bikes around, around here. You should use penny farthings, though. They're more sustainable, too. They don't use chains, no lubricants. So for your personal bikes, what's your most favorite thing to customize? Like, some people like handlebars, some people prefer the shifters, wheels. What's the part of your bikes that you get most obsessed with? Um, I don't customize bikes. I, I, I'm very, very uh, uh, um, kind of minimalist in that sense when it comes to bikes. I really enjoy putting them together and doing the work on them and like I said I like building wheels I like doing all of that kind of stuff um, I don't do anything on the bikes just to kind of like make them look a certain way I don't I, I, I don't get really excited about the way the bike looks particularly I mean I want it to look like I don't want it to look you know all weird colors like a Google bike or something but <laughs> No, I just like it to be kind of, kind of no nonsense. But I enjoy. I just, but the process I enjoy, like I said, the wheels. It's fun to wrap bar tape and things like that. You know, you feel good when you do a nice job. You know, if everything looks tidy, I'm tidy, except for the drivetrain, which is filthy. <laughs> and so, a second question would be: uh, one of the things I like about your post, and if I don't have a chance to read it, I always go out and look at the the, the images. Uh, can you comment on maybe like three or four of the most favorite images you've ever posted? Well, definitely the lone wolf image is a lot of people have, that's resonated with a lot of people. And again, describing blog posts is not the most uh, entertaining thing. I wish I had a, a slide of him, but he's kind of a character fr in L.A., by the way, who rides around on a on a uh, on a sort of a fared mountain bike thing with with like 18 bottles of water kind of coming off his seat post and he's very uh he's a compelling character but the lone wolf there's a there's a something called the world's greatest madone which is a trek bicycle it's like a full-on race bike with carbon wheels but the guy kind of put like flat bars and a rack on it and turned it in it's like a nine thousand dollar townie bike <laughs> it's insane so that by that was a great picture and but those are two pictures people have sent to me you know that 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 came from people and I, that's one, another one of the great things about writing the blog is you hear from people all the time and people send you great pictures like that. So th those are the standouts at the moment. And of course the woman with the turtle that I showed earlier. But that got me in a little hot water. Uh, so living in San Francisco, bikers' rights are obviously a, a huge issue. Um, and I loved your article on Outside Magazine. I thought that was awesome. But along that stream, sort of wanted to get your take on your travels, what cities you've seen have had some of the, the better improvements or some of the better, you know, bike, uh, bikeable cities. Better cycling experiences? Yeah. Um, I lo every time I've come to, to, you know, this area, to Northern California, I, I absolutely love it. I really like this area. And um, uh, riding in San Francisco is a real pleasure. And riding up, up over the bridge and around there, it's, it's great. And... Uh, and uh, going to Portland as well. Portland was uh, just in terms of riding. It, it was uh, you know all the hype is is about Portland being so bike friendly, but a lot of it's legitimate in that it's very very easy to ride your bike there around the city for transportation. Yeah, you can kind of duck right like five minutes out of downtown. You're in Forest Park and on unpaved roads through the ferns or whatever kind of plants they are. Portland's a great place to ride. It's great. Um, uh, but it, New York's great too. Um, it's a lot better than people think. It's about how much email do you get every day in response to the blog? Uh, I, it's hard to quantify, and I, I don't count it exactly. But it's—I mean, it's—it's it's not like stupendous, but it's more than I can—I can really—I can really take in. You know, unfortunately, there's a lot of a lot of stuff uh, uh, I don't get to read because because it's a lot of email, but. Um, um, I, I get some good uh, emails with business proposals that I'm always sure to respond to, the Nigerian ones and all of that. Those are, those are always welcome, and I've done well for myself with those. But, uh, yeah, a, a decent amount. <laughs> and second question. In the book, you say that when you're angry, you can, you can melt cheese with your eyes. 
wondering what kind of cheese are we talking about? Are we talking about a cheddar or are we talking about like a wimpy Like French a pecorino. Cheese? I could melt a pecorino. <laughs> I melted a whole wheel of cheese when you guys canceled my AdSense. <laughs> <laughs> and I grated some cheese too. Uh, yes. Hi. Hi. Just curious. Um, was that your first kid that we saw? Or yes. Yes, uh, it was. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, have you? Uh, what are you? What are your thoughts on uh, kids on bikes riding? Uh, riding with babies on bikes? And uh, I haven't got bikes. Would you modify to attach the baby to? Oh yeah. I mean, it's going to be a while before you know he's in the. They don't have necks. Their necks don't work yet, so you can't even think about it. Well, I know somebody yeah. who claims that he used to carry his baby in his messenger bag, but I'm not doing that. So I don't know. Uh, 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 Surly, the company Surly, lent me one of their big dummy cargo bikes, and if uh, you know, I don't intend to give it back to them until they make me <laughs> give it back to them. But that would be a good like baby bike when he's old enough and he can keep his head up and put him on the, you know, put a seat on the back there and and do the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, you don't seem to re be a real big fan of kind of charity cycling events, uh, and or at least that's what I've gathered from oh. the blog. And uh, I was hoping you could maybe just speak to that a little bit. Um, one of the, uh, you know, on the one hand, you could say it brings a lot of people into cycling. You know, they wouldn't do it unless it was a full right. support race down to L.A. or something. Uh, but you just seem to have uh, kind of the opposite view. Oh, no, I, I, no I have not, I'm a big fan of charity rides, absolutely. They, if I make fun of charity rides on my blog, it's usually about, like, you always have the person on the charity ride who thinks it's a race. You know, it takes it really seriously and is at the front. <laughs> that, so that's what I'm making fun of it, the people who kind of come at it. Who, it, it like you said, it, it brings a lot of people to cycling, introduces it to them, and you have people like that. And then you have the guy who's got the full-on carbon bike and he's got the kid on but he's got the bushy hairy legs and like this is he's gonna throw down at the charity ride and <laughs> that's that's what I'm making fun of you know the the guy who's not who hasn't you want to be competitive step it up <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, speaking of hairy legs I, I yeah to talk about that for a minute so is it I have hairy legs. Is, is there anything I can do to offset the discrimination from that? Or do I only make it you worse? You can shave your legs. <laughs> 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 no, I don't know. I just, no, I just threw the hairy leg reference in there. I think, I think it's weirder to shave your legs. I mean, it's kind of a silly thing to do. But <laughs> no, so do, we wear that hair with pride. Do, do you think it looks worse to have everything together except the legs? Like maybe if you tone it down, it would actually look better? To or tone what down? The you rest know, of the if you wardrobe? you've got the rest of the kit and the bike and you've got everything, but you've got the hairy legs, is that better or is it better to... I think, you know, I don't want to get too into the hair, but like if you have crazy wild pelty hair and then <laughs> the, 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 and you wear a kit, sometimes it's just, you know, the, 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 it's a jarring contrast. You know, you get the kind of lycra and then poof. Right. And then, <laughs> so that you might, you know, but I mean, otherwise, a little, little hair, it's fine. Hair is hair is hair. Uh, any other questions, hair or not hair related? <laughs> going once, going twice, and what? <laughs> uh, and that's it. All right. Thank you.